policy marks a significant expansion of the use of unmanned planes in Yemen. Many critics say increased airstrikes will push up the number of civilian casualties, undermine U.S. law, and further destabilize Yemen. The U.S. has stepped up its drone attacks since President Barack Obama took office in 2008. One of the bloodiest attacks in Yemen took place in 2009, when dozens of people, many of them women and children, were killed in the Al-Majala region. Yemen is not the only country targeted by U.S. drones. The unmanned aircraft are also operating in Afghanistan, Pakistan and Somalia. Washington claims the airstrikes target militants. However, they have mostly resulted in civilian casualties. The United Nations has identified the U.S. as the world's number one user of targeted killings, largely due to its drone attacks in Pakistan and Afghanistan. The international community does not know when and where the CIA is authorized to kill, the criteria for individuals who may be killed, how it ensures killings are legal, and what follow-up there is when civilians are illegally killed. In a situation in which there is no disclosure of who has been killed, for what reason, and whether innocent civilians have died, the legal principle of international accountability is by definition comprehensively violated. Well, let's find out if we can get an answer regarding the use of drones by the United States. Let me introduce our guest. Uh, we have uh, from Code Pink activist Ty Berry joining us from Washington. American philosopher and political commentator James Fetzer joins us from Madison. And a senior editor at Veterans Today, Gordon Duff, joins us on the phone from Ohio. Gentlemen, welcome. Uh, James Fetzer, uh, perhaps you can clarify this for us. Uh, first, let's look at the line from the U.S. on this. The U.S. will now be allowed to target individuals found to be plotting to attack the U.S. or American territory overseas, even if U.S. intelligence cannot identify the people by name. How do you explain the rationale behind this? Well, the whole situation is completely outrageous. It used to be a principle of uh, American moral and political philosophy that it's better to let 10 guilty men go free than for one innocent person to suffer. The whole line about Al-Qaeda is completely fabricated. This was uh, an entity created by the United States to resist the Soviet invasion in Afghanistan. Osama bin Laden is well known to have been our man in the Middle East, where a CIA agent even visited him in Dubai when he was undergoing treatment for dialysis. Uh, studies have shown that use of drones because of the inability to discern precisely who the target is properly costing 140 civilian deaths, innocent deaths for every targeted insurgent, it's a disgrace that the United States should be abdicating its responsibility. It represents a grotesque violation of international law and the principles of jurisprudence rooted in the concept of due process. No man should be deprived of life, liberty, or property without the opportunity to defend himself in a court of law. While this is alleged to be a war context, the complete abdication of responsibility here is grotesque and stains the reputation of the United States. Ty Berry, uh, maybe we should uh, do a flashback here. Uh, you may recall when Obama in January said the drone strikes had not inflicted huge civilian casualties. Well, when in fact, as it's been documented, for example, in Pakistan, drone strikes have killed uh, 10 civilians for every militant killed. Some estimates are higher, such as the one James Fetzer said. But uh, looking at just that ratio, which is 10 to 1, wouldn't this signature airstrike increase the number of deaths based on uh, the report card of the success or failure of these uh, assassination drones? Well, that's absolutely a fact. The fact of the matter is the, the, the uh, what a mistake, the Obama administration is trying to get ahead of the press that's going to come out. This weekend in Washington, D.C., we are going to have a, the first international drone summit. It's called by Medea Benjamin, Code Pink, and other groups that are, that are getting together and talking about the issues around these signature strikes. 
that are now becoming prevalent. It's now becoming knowledgeable in, in the American uh, media. For, as a matter of fact, signature strikes have been going on since the beginning of the strikes in uh, Pakistan. As you'll remember, the first strikes in Pakistan, the CIA wouldn't even admit they were, they were drone strikes. They said for years these were uh, fired from uh, American war, war planes. And uh, now, then they came out and said, yes, indeed, we do have drones. And now they're saying, we're now going to start signature strikes, which they've been starting. We have a gentleman here, Shiraz, that came from Pakistan. He's a lawyer. He's putting his life on the line. He was not allowed to have a visa to the United States for 14 months. We finally pressured the State Department to let him in and tell his story to the American public of the countless, the hundreds and hundreds of innocent lives that are lost in Pakistan. For example, in, the nor in, the, uh, in Waziristan, if they pick every man with a beard, well, every man has a beard in, in Waziristan. If they pick a man with a gun, every man carries a gun. It's, a, it's tribal. That's the way they, they walk around in their area. And then how do they pick who is a terrorist out of these groups? It's, the fact of the matter is, is they're just shooting at anything that they want to shoot at, and then they sort it out later. This is, a, 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 as a matter of fact, a 16-year-old kid was given a camera in Pakistan to go in and document what was going on in Waziristan because no foreign media can get in there. And the, he was killed two days later with a drone strike. And they called him a terrorist. So we're seeing this was, uh, he was given the camera by Reprieve, a well-known br British group that's fighting for the rights of Pakistanis in the tribal areas to resist against these drone strikes by the terrorist uh, group of Obama CIA. What we're calling for is to take the drones out of the hands of the CIA, if at worst, give it to the military, so there's some oversight, some transparency, as Obama promised when he was elected. Gordon,